What is freaking up you guys? Precious here and I'm back with another video. If you're new to my channel, hi, hello, welcome, thank you for joining and I hope you stay for more. And if you're a returning subscriber, hey, what's good? What's poppin'? I'm so glad you decided to stay with me through my inconsistency and for that, I love you. Okay, so, um, I'm finally back, you guys. I'm finally back. Finally got another, getting more videos up and stuff like that. But as y'all can tell in the title, today I'm going to be telling y'all all about the Disney College program. How I got in. Excuse me, I burped. Excuse me, I burped again. Oh my gosh. How I got in, my timeline as to like how long things took for me. Oh yeah, it's gonna be a jam-packed video. It might be a little bit longer than my usual videos are, but it's so fine. Time timestamps are in the description as usual, so you can jump around as you please. But yeah, uh, it's also gonna be a drive with me because I am driving to the city. So yeah, let's do it. Okay. So this is our, those are our notes, and there's still more. So that's everything that I'm gonna be covering. I'm gonna pop the phone up so I'm not holding it. And yeah, so first thing that I'm going to start with is the process, you know, like how does it work? So the qualifications to get in are very, very simple, very basic. You have to be 18 or older. You have to live or be qualified to work in the United States. And you have to either be currently enrolled in or you have to be a uh, maximum of two years post-grad. So if you just graduated college and it's been less than two years since you graduated, you're still eligible to apply for the Disney College program. So, there's that. Those are the uh, qualifications. They're very basic, to be completely honest. All right, and we have to wait at the stop sign for a little bit. <clears throat> They're very basic, to be completely honest. Um, so then you have the five key qualities that Disney looks for um, in their potential candidates. And these qualities are safety, courtesy, show, inclusion, and efficiency. If you can show that you either currently have these qualities or you demonstrated these qualities in your past work experience your odds of getting into the DCP shoot up that much more so yeah it's, it's yeah <laughs> okay so now we're gonna get into the application process the application process has uh, basically five phases so the first one is the initial application phase It's very simple very easy very straightforward um, you just go online to the DCP website put in your application and that's it standard fill out your questions and then um, your application status is gonna go from the first one which is your initial application um, is gonna go to from application received to application under review and then it's gonna be in consideration those are the first three stages of your application you can don't really have any control over those stages um, it's really one of those things where it's like okay that's how it's just that's just where it's gonna be um, and then after your application is in consideration um, for me personally I got uh, an email or not an email I got the request to do the next thing which is the web-based interview I got the enter the notification to that as soon as I finished my initial application um, as soon as I finished the initial application so there's that but some people say that they don't get that notification right away and that you have to wait for like to get an email or something like that so it varies from person to person um, it probably from like season to season as well but the next part is your web-based interview a lot of people it's often compared to a BuzzFeed quiz you're gonna be asked a bunch of questions um, you're gonna answer them from most likely to to least likely to with neutral in the middle my personal advice is to never answer neutral um, never answer neutral or just answer neutral as little as possible just because when you answer neutral too many times it kind of gives the impression that you don't really care um, about whatever they're saying or really just in general you don't really care and that's not a good look so um, always answer on one side or the other if you can if you really don't know and you can't then hey answer neutral because one of the most important things is that you should be honest um, and you have to be careful with the uh, web based interview because they're gonna ask a lot of questions uh, a couple of questions are gonna be the same thing worded differently and the reason for them doing this is because they want to see if you're being if you're actually being honest um, and if you're not being honest it's really it might trip you up so 
Yeah. So after the web-based interview, uh, you get your results immediately. You get your results instantly. So you either it will either say that your application is no longer being considered or your application has been sent to a recruiter. Um, uh, it has been sent to a recruiter. So after your application is sent to a recruiter, uh, you will get an email request for you to schedule a phone interview. Um, the phone interview, you have to schedule it. You have a certain amount of time. I think it is two or three days to schedule a phone interview. If you run out of time and you do not schedule that interview, then you could potentially lose your spot in the DCP. So with the phone interview, um, you are going to speak to a recruiter and it's just like an in-person interview, but over the phone. Um, my biggest advice here is to really just be yourself. One, and two, keep in mind the role that you want. So uh, ideally, before you apply for the DCP, you're going to, DCP is Disney College Program, that's how I'm gonna refer to it a lot. So before you apply to the DCP, ideally you will have looked up and looked into the different roles that they offer and that they have. And so my advice to you is when you're putting in your application and you're talking to the recruiter, you really want to focus on jobs that have the same skills as the role that you want to have. So for example, if you want to have um, a job in food and beverage, right? You want to work with food and beverage and you've worked at plenty of restaurants in the past, then that's what you want to focus on. You want to focus on your restaurant experience. You want to focus on, um, really just everything that has to do with food and beverage and that food service because that's going to boost your your chances of getting a food and beverage job um if you want to work in attractions and say for example you've worked at like fedex or something like that then i want you to you need to highlight that you worked at fedex and the different things you had to do at fedex and the responsibilities you had and all that good stuff so yes that is the phone interview so the final stage is your offer. So uh, like I said, we're speaking as if you are getting accepted into this DCP. Um, when you get your offer, it will be in your email and you have seven days from the time that offer hits your inbox to accept or decline your um, to accept or decline your spot in the Disney College program. Now, if that seven days passes and you still have not accepted or declined, they're automatically going to decline it because you took too long. Like I said, everything is everything has a time slot, so you have to be very mindful of that and be do everything in a timely manner. So, um, you when you accept your offer you do have to pay. I will get into how much everything costs and all the specifics later, but I do want to let y'all know when you accept your offer, you have to pay. Um, and then offers are usually given out on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So, yeah. So let's talk about the timeline to your arrival. So, uh, the timeline to your arrival is about eight stages. It's seven or eight, depending on the role that you get, but we'll get into that in a minute. So the first thing is going to be your dorms registration. Dorms is the platform that Disney uses for housing and um, a few other things as well. But um, this, you're going to receive a notification. Everything, all, Disney does everything through email. So that's the side note Disney does everything through email so you need to make sure that you are keeping an eye on your email and that you are you're on top of it okay um, so your dorms registration you will receive that notification in your email about two months prior to your arrival and this is where you are going to opt in or out of housing um, Disney does provide housing for you for the DCP. Um, if you do opt in, you will be residing as of 2024 at Flamingo Crossings, either east or west, the apartment complexes. Um, and you have the option to opt out of housing, but I think you can only do that if you like currently live in Orlando or something like that. And then when you do your dorms registration, this is where you have the opportunity to do your roommate linking. Um, one of the tips I'm going to give you later will on it will go more into the roommate linking, but this is where you will be able to do that. So the second part of the second stage to arrival is going to be when you pay the second part of your program fees, um, and this part goes towards housing. 
you will receive the notification for this about six weeks prior to your arrival and um basically this will cover the um well i'll tell you what it covers later but basically um just to like just to kind of give you a little overview it covers um mainly the first week of housing that you're there plus something else um but again we'll get into that later um and you have to pay it like i said whether you live on site or not so if you opt in to housing and you know you pay it awesome you know your first week is covered pretty much with a little bit that you might have to cover as well uh if you opt out so sorry you still have to pay it that's just i don't know why but that it is what it is all right so then the third stage to the DCP is your lease when you receive your lease you will get this about five weeks prior to arrival and you have three days from the moment that lease hits your inbox to both sign and submit the lease. you don't have to pay anything when you accept when you sign the lease um, but you do have to sign it and submit it within three days um, what's exciting about the lease in my opinion is this is where you find out your housing assignment wow i'm hitting traffic perfect anyways this is where you find out your housing assignment so when you sign your lease your next two flamingo crossings you're going to see a total of one two three four five numbers um the first two numbers is going to be what building you're going to be in the third number is going to be your floor and then the last two numbers is going to be your apartment number so as soon as you find out where you're going to be in your lease potentially you can like do some digging in like the facebook groups or whatever to find out who your roommate or suite mates are going to be so yeah and also like see who if you have been using one of the tips that i'm going to give you later then see like how close you're going to be to some of the people that you've met which is pretty exciting um and there are two flamingo crossings there is flamingo crossing east and flamingo crossing west they are uh basically two separate complexes um in two different areas but they're both the same pretty much more or less i don't know exactly the differences but yeah all right so the fourth stage, um, the fourth step before your arrival, this is the one that is not optional, but optional um, It's dependent on your role. So it's not optional. Um, it is a drug screening. Um, you are only going to have to do the drug screening if you get a safety critical role. So if you get a job in, or you get a role in attractions or as a lifeguard, or I think also like anything that works with little kids directly. If you get a role in any of those three areas, with I think I think there's one or two that I'm that I'm missing. Um, you get a role in those, you have to do this drug screening. So you receive the notification for this drug screening about four weeks prior to your arrival, and um, like I said, it's for safety critical roles. You have two days from the moment this hits your inbox to schedule the actual drugs the drug test and then you get five additional days so uh five days after that to actually complete the drug test and submit your results um if you don't do it at all or if you do it late like if you miss the deadline or whatever um that can impact not only your role but your actual place in the dcp so if you don't do it or it's too late you could end up like giving up inadvertently giving up your spot in the dcp basically um so yeah the next thing is going to be i9 and workday paperwork so all your onboarding paperwork and stuff like that so you're going to receive uh emails to do these between two and four weeks prior to your arrival. Um, this is all the onboarding information, the important paperwork, uh, the tax information, the payment stuff. Um, this is all of that. And you have to complete this before you get to Disney. So before your arrival day, you this has to be completed. Um, and this part is exciting because you get to find out your tentative role um so yeah you get an idea of what you're going to be doing um they put a role on there it is still subject to change until you get your itinerary uh, but it usually doesn't change um it usually stays the same um so yeah and then after i9 and workday 
you get your itinerary. So your itinerary you receive between seven and 10 days before your arrival day. And your official role, like I said, will be here. Whatever role that you saw on your work day is probably going to be the same. Sometimes it's different, especially if you did like an audition for a character role or something like that and you got it, that it could change um, or any other circumstances, like maybe the drug test or whatever. Um, it could change, but 99% of the time, it's exactly the same. So whatever you see on your work day, uh, you can kind of expect to be on your itinerary, but hey, it is what it is. So yeah, um, your itinerary is going to have the schedule of events for your entire arrival week. So that entire first week that you are there um, from arrival day, you're going to have things to do. Um, it's not gonna you're not gonna have things to do every single day but you're gonna have things to do so um it's gonna have the schedule of events and what i what the ooh, english the reason i find the itinerary so useful besides knowing where you need to be and what time is you can plan your park days that um you can plan your park days with your itinerary so you use your itinerary, you take it, you go, oh, okay, well, I'm going to be here, here, here on these days, but I have these three days where I'm not doing anything, so I can go to the parks on these three days. And also, just so you can get a sense of the first week. And then the last part is your training schedule. Because remember, we are going to be working. Yes, this is the Disney College program. We're going to be at Disney, but we're going to be working. So the next last part of it is going to be your training schedule. Um, there's no specific day or timeline where you're going to receive your training schedule. It's supposed to be after you receive your itinerary, but before you arrive. So if you are like two or three days out and you have not received your training schedule yet, you need to reach out to them so that they can give it to you um, because you need that before you get there. So yeah. That is basically the timeline to arrival. Um, if y'all do have any other questions, I will link the actual website, the DCP website, um, in the description box so y'all can go down and read and find any other information that I might have left out. So now we are going to get to the final part of this video, finally. Um, which is going to be my personal timeline and my role. So I'm going to be telling you guys exactly how long um, my timeline was from when I put in my application to when I received my, when I accepted my offer. So my application, my actual application, I put it in on March 23rd. And as soon, like I said earlier, as soon as I finished my application, I got a little message telling me to do the web-based interview. So I did that on the exact same day. So my application and my web-based interview were done on March 23rd. Uh, my phone interview, I also got an email to schedule my phone interview on the 23rd. So the first three big things, the inner phone interview, web-based interview, and actual application, I did all of those on the 23rd. So my actual phone interview, like when it was supposed to be done, it was scheduled for March 26th. So that's when I did it and I got, the recruiter told me that I was gonna get a decision within one to two weeks um, after we had finished the phone interview. And Disney as a whole sends you a little email and they let you know that all decisions uh, will be made by May 31st. Uh, for me, since we're in 2024. So they let us know, hey, uh, all decisions, no matter what happens, are going to be made by May 31st, 2024. I got my acceptance um, one, two, two days later on March 28th. Um, so that's when I got my email that said you have been accepted with the banner that was doing a bunch of cool little tit tricks and I was like really happy about it. So that happened and then I actually accepted my offer and paid the first portion of the fee on March 30th. So from application put in, from me putting in my application to me um, accepting my offer was a total of seven days. Not seven business days, just seven days. Now your process could be look like that. It could be longer, it could be shorter. Some people say they wait weeks, some people say they wait months, some, day, some people say it's been a few days. Me personally, I was lucky enough to where mine took a few days, uh, pretty much a week, um, to where I got my final decision and accepted my offer. 
so yeah and then the last part that I was so 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 anxious for and so excited for that people kept asking me and I kept telling them I didn't know um, was my role and what I'm going to be doing where am I going to be working at Disney I am going to be working at Chef Mickey's which is a food and beverage location it is in the contemporary resort so yeah some people are like oh you're gonna get tired I'm like well I'm not in the parks so I feel like I feel like I'll be okay but yeah that is it for today's video you guys I really 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 hope y'all enjoyed it if you did please make sure to like it comment down below and subscribe to my channel and make sure to hit that notification bell so you can stay in the loop and never miss a thing and I will see y'all in the next one bye